as a young boy, for some reason, I would always be around Washington's Crossing. For me to go there and to, and to go across on a dorm boat as General Washington, it, it will be the most humbling experience I've ever had in my, in my life. My name is Sam Davis. My name is John Godziva. My name is Ron Rinaldi. My name is Patrick Jordan. And I want to be George Washington. This is the site of the turning point of the American Revolution. In 1776, after a year of fighting, George Washington led his broken and demoralized army across the Delaware, from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, and claimed the first major victory for the Continental Army at the Battle of Trenton. More than two centuries later, some 200 reenactors get into boats every Christmas day to relive that very moment. But only one man gets to portray Washington. For a select few, to be George is a dream, one they would do anything to make a reality. Sam Davis is one of those men. He'll compete to be George Washington at the 2012 reenactment of The Crossing. He spent every waking moment of the last five years preparing for one 15-minute audition, where he'll try to win the role. And the competition is intense. But our cause is just. We must be steadfast in our struggle for freedom and liberty. There's no doubt in my mind, I have what it takes. This competition, this was my battle. This is the Battle of Trent. For me, I know my stuff, and I'm not bragging. I don't brag. I'm just telling you a fact. Sam is a 48-year-old high school teacher in Trenton, New Jersey, and a former bodybuilder. To be victorious, he'll have to face nine finalists who have gone through the same mental and physical transformation that can border on insanity. And when passions collide, men will fight. Political intrigue and rivalry will come to a head, and almost everyone will be disappointed. I'm not a goof. I'm not a weirdo. I just have a passion, you know? And this is it. There's, there's a book. It's called, I Want to Be George Washington. Well, I could write a book. I am George Washington. Yorio. The Crossing is a cherished tradition in New Jersey and Pennsylvania that's happened each year for the past 60 years at Washington Crossing Park. Rob Rinaldi, here. Scott Spicer, here. See, here's the thing. This reenactment every year is a very emotional issue here in this community. I didn't realize it until I moved here 10 years ago. Who has participated more than 10 years? 15, 20. I was just like, what, you know, these people are nutty, you know, but then now I understand. It, it, it has deep, deep, deep roots. It, it, you know, it just means a lot. We'll see what mess parking is. I don't get the special uh, Washington's parking spot. I, I, did, I did two years ago. Though there's a playing field of 10 men, to Sam, there's only one he has to beat, the incumbent. John Godziba, a married 53-year-old police lieutenant in Bristol, Pennsylvania, has held the role of George Washington for three years, and he has no intention of giving it up. He's been reenacting for decades. Captain. At your service, General. General. If you talk to anybody who's done this before, they're all gonna say, I stood there in the ranks, I looked out there, and I said, I want to do that. I see many 
tired and weary faces, and we've lost so many to sickness. We've shared the cold, the snow, and the rain. And I pledge to you that I and your officers will not desert you. I mean, it's almost like being a president of the United States or being a very few people. I mean, when you get to the top, there's only one person that could do it, and you look on that plaque, and there's only eight people that have done it, and it's, it's neat to, to be part of that legacy. John was elected in 2009, when the term limit was two years. The rules of the contest have always been fluid. Sometimes George's term was two years, sometimes three. But one thing has always stayed the same. When there was a new round of auditions, the current George didn't compete. The same year John was chosen, however, the state slashed the budget of Washington Crossing Park, nearly closing it down. And rules went out the window. A nonprofit group, the Friends of Washington Crossing Park, stepped in to save the site. And to understand, guys, they actually closed the park a couple of years ago. Closed. The local community got together with three actors, Fifth PA and other units, formed a 501c3, were able to get reopen the park. We basically run the park. John was elected the group's president, giving him the power to determine all things park-related, like when the next auditions for a new George would be. In August 2012, a call for contestants went out. But instead of stepping down like previous Georges, John has placed himself back in the running, creating widespread concern that the man who has it all, the role and the power, is unwilling to give it up. Uh, you you know, I, I hope it's fair, you know, I hope. But you know, really, I mean, here's the president of the Wa Friends of Washington Crossing. I mean, that's wrong. That is totally wrong. Wrong. In the quirky world of reenacting, every reimagined battle, every recreated death, only matters because of what George Washington was able to accomplish with his crossing. It was a bleak, blisteringly cold night, a nor'easter, when Washington set out for a surprise attack against the Hessian outpost in Trenton. At the time, Washington had only a small portion of his army left, and enlistments were about to expire. He desperately needed a victory. Had Washington not made this bold stroke, the American Revolution would truly have died on the banks of the Delaware, and the signatories of the Declaration of Independence would have been hunted down by the British, imprisoned, and executed. <laughs> to play George Washington in one of his most brilliant moments on that same piece of river on those same Durham boats has got to be the ultimate in, in being a reenactor. Anyone interested in portraying Washington can get a gig at a school or local event. But aside from portraying George at his Mount Vernon estate, this is as high profile as you can get. If you're George, you're a local celebrity. And portray Washington at park events throughout the year. On a good day, the crossing can bring some 8,000 people to the banks of the river. The next morning, your face ends up on newspapers around the world. Who is worthy of that kind of prestige has always been controversial. But now, with John keeping himself in the competition, it's even more so. This year's hopefuls will go against a man who is in more ways than one the face of Washington Crossing Park. And quite frankly, he's good at it. Make way for his excellency. Welcome to New Jersey, General. Thank you. Tyranny has ended. I'm here. This is somebody that's really putting the effort in to make everybody else that's the lower level soldier believe that, yes, this individual is George Washington on these days. All right. Hello. Merry Christmas. You got the charisma. You got the relationship with the public. I'm canceling all taxes in New Jersey immediately. John's got a damn pat. The odds may be against them. They may have no chance of toppling John. But the men who would be George can't help but answer the call, become a contestant, and try. Does it look okay? Does the next thing look good? Yeah, how does it look good? It doesn't look good to me. 
In a matter of hours, Sam will stand on a stage before seven judges for his audition. His wife Tracy and his daughter Hannah help him get ready. Learning everything about Washington has become an obsession for him, from Washington's dog's name to whether he really had wooden teeth. He didn't. He's read countless books in Washington's letters, even watched John Godzeba at his events, and spent nearly $3,000 on a custom-made uniform. In Sam's mind, the role is already his. But Ron Rinaldi and Patrick Jordan, two other finalists, want it just as bad and have wanted it for longer. Oh, the moon, it was a sickening sight. Oh, I wish I was in Hackensack now. I remember seeing The Crossing on TV in 1976 on, I think it was a PBS channel. That was the first year in first grade. And that kind of put a little uh, in the back burner. And that's been there. And just to be Washington, you know, I'd like to have, love to have it. All right, Pennsylvania. We are, Beat man. the British. Beat the British. Patrick Jordan was just 12 years old when he started Revolutionary War reenacting. He went to Fort Mifflin in Philadelphia for a siege weekend, and after just a few hours, he was hooked. During the week, Pat works in production at a manufacturing plant in southern Jersey. On weekends, you'll find him in uniform, at an event, living history. He even met his longtime girlfriend Peggy at the crossing. Now she serves as a soldier in his unit. Pat is a commander and captain of the 9th Pennsylvania Light Infantry Company, with his sights set on becoming a general. The general. At age 43, he's just a year younger than Washington was at the crossing. Italian. So this is his time. From a line into a column, by the right wheel, by section. Right wheel? Yeah. Pat knows for many this can seem silly or strange. But for him, reenacting is much more than a hobby. Why do people do it? I, you know, it, it, it takes an individual. Um, not everybody likes this stuff. I mean, nobody in my immediate family likes this. My brother doesn't like it. I mean, my parent, it's not my parents' cup of tea. I took my sister on one event. It, it didn't work for her either. So I, I, I do it because I love history. I have a lot of friends, and, and I like being with my friends. And it, it, it's an escape. Um, it's more, it's, it's not even as, as a hobby anymore, it's a lifestyle. And uh, we, we, we take it very seriously. Everyone who does reenactments does it whether you're doing crossing or a battle, the Battle of Monmouth or a battle somewhere else, dressing up, living in a tent, sleeping there. Every one of us feels like we, it's almost like we did this once before. There's something that's drawing us to it. We like Blair. This is so cool. I know, I that's George this. Washington. Hi. Hello. That's my cousin. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> when it comes to being George, Ron Rinaldi, a 49-year-old retired cop from Branchburg, has been there, done that, and wants to do it again. He portrayed George at the crossing in 2007 and 2008. These days, he's George at local events. He gets a gig here and there, but he's ready to go back to the big leagues. Yeah. So you are the official George, or you just do George? Uh, what, what are you talking about official now? There's a lot of Georges. Yeah, there's a George at Mount Vernon. There's a George all over. For Ron, reenacting started when he was 14, the same year Pat saw The Crossing on TV for the first time. I got into The Crossing back in 1976 because at the time, my mother was a columnist for the Trentonian newspaper in Trenton. My editor asked me to go and interview Sinjin Terrell. Who, at the time, was portraying Washington and also started the whole crossing back in the 50s. He actually looked a lot like George Washington. He said, would your son like to be a soldier? And I was 14, and my mom came home and said, would you like to do this? And I said, what are you talking about? I had no idea what was going on. It just 
grabbed him, as it does some people. It grabbed him and it's never let go. In 36 years, Ron has become a police officer, had three children, retired, taken up teaching, and never once missed a crossing. He's seen people come and go, and the crossing itself transform. What began as a hokey pageant promoting St. John Terrell's circus has become an authentic historical reenactment. And while the role of George was once handed down and held for years, Today, there's a more formal process with an open competition where any man can take a chance at being George. Watching these men as I grew up portray Washington and give the speech and, and just living that military history through reenactments and through teaching uh, and through studying, I said, you know, it was about time I could try for Washington and I gave it a shot. And five years ago, he was chosen. But both years, because the river was too high, he didn't get to cross. Just like George Washington in 1776, the crossing is at the mercy of the weather. But unlike 1776, if the current is too strong or the river is frozen, Washington has the option of walking across the bridge or getting on the boat for a photo op. Ron has done both. He is in fact the only George Washington who hasn't crossed on Christmas Day and it weighs on him, because crossing matters. Everybody wants to see this little march, they want to see Washington speak, and they want to see everybody cross the boats. And when you can't cross in the boats, a lot of people get upset. They feel like you didn't accomplish the crossing. So button that, put your hat on, excuse me. After his two-year term, Ron resigned the position and served as a judge, electing John Godziba. The man he now fears is addicted to the role. You're Washington. I mean, it's, it's addictive in a way that, you know, power is addictive to people today and these movie stars and, and uh, politicians. If you ask anybody why is Washington famous, they'll say, well, he was the first president of the United States or, you know, he won the American Revolution. And that's all true. Um, but that's not why he's famous. Um, he's famous uh, for one thing. And the one thing he's famous for is that he did not abuse power, and he did not become addicted to the power that was given him. Well, if I wanted to be George Washington for life, I would have never created a committee to, to have an audition. I could have easily been very quiet and let this slip by, and I could have kept this for a couple more years. But people started asking questions, and I, I thought it was only fair to say, let's have a competition, let's have another audition. But there's no denying. Today's competition is different from all the ones that have come before it. For the first time, the event will be closed to the public and the press. Each audition is private. Before, judges would deliberate on the spot and announce the winner the same day. But under the new rules, they'll make an announcement at a later date. And since John is president of the Friends organization, it's assumed he'll know more judges than most. I've kept myself out of the process. I didn't want any appearance of impropriety. So when this committee was formed, I said, Go do your thing, and I stayed back, and, and I, the only thing that I know about the competition is what all the other competitors know, and that's the way I wanted it. With the passion and lifelong ambition that's tied up in this contest, things are already starting to get ugly. People get a little too into the business, they call it the business end of reenacting, they get a little too into it. It can get very catty. How petty can it get? Yes. Oh, it can get very. Tell me. Like, are you it can get very to, like, petty. They start making fun of your buttons, or I mean, no, it can. It, that bad? No, it can get very petty. Just with the George Washington thing, somebody from New Jersey called your paper and said that um, it, it was if it was me, it was a fix. For the people in that region around Washington Crossing, this has been going on for decades. Think about um, all the communities that where there's a group of people who um, nearly come to blows over who has the best Christmas light display. So to me, for people to be impassioned, to be spending money and time and energy trying to emulate George Washington, whew, God bless America. <laughs> Going into this contest, I'm not really quite sure how it's going to be conducted or, or why it's going to be conducted. I was always a believer of, of transparency, and if you're going to have a contest, you know, make apparent and public the rules, regulations, the contestants. You don't really choose things behind closed doors, uh, cloak and dagger style. 
because then it just leaves questions. Where are you, where are you from? Um, Doylestown. Okay. Have you done? I don't, I don't, no. Oh, okay. This is it. The auditions. Ten George Washingtons will meet in front of seven judges here at the David Library, just a mile and a half from where Washington crossed the Delaware. The judges are looking for someone with Washington's appearance, tall, roughly the same age and stature, someone with military bearing, a comprehensive understanding of his life, an accurate knowledge of what reenactors call kit, their uniform. You can't go down to a costume store and buy a George Washington uniform. It's not going to work. A, a, a good George Washington uniform costs anywhere from two to four thousand dollars and must be custom made. What it boils down to is this: Is this contestant believable as Washington? And one of them is this guy, Frank. I don't know who Frank is. He's I mean, a nice for those guy. who have been here before. There are a lot of questions regarding the changes to this year's process. This guy who's been watched and now has been in front of these people every day for three years. Oh, and the biggest thing For Sam, who hasn't been in this game as long, it's not about the rules. He only cares about one thing, winning. All summer long, I've trained like an like a Olympic athlete for this day. Really. The only person that would be better than me here is George Washington. Time is up. All that's left for anyone to do is seize their 15 minutes on stage, be the man, and hope that's enough. Remember, until now, every contest has been open to the public, and candidates could get a sense of the competition by watching the others perform. But today, with the rule changes, this is as far as we're allowed to go. Let the waiting begin. Well, you know, we walk in, we walk into the corner. Um, they ask you to start off. I started off with my speech. Tonight, the watchword is victory or death. For I am resolved that by morning, Trenton, immortal honor, and glorious victory shall be ours. I got through my entire speech, which obviously they were only giving you three minutes. So it was like the Academy Awards. They started pulling me off the stage. I gave the Thomas Paine crisis speech. Oh, yes. Uh, these are the times that try men's souls. These are the times that try men's souls. These are the times that try men's souls. That's one of my fortes. I, I can do that speech with all the might and vigor that I believe that Thomas Paine had in mind. I think I had the attention of, of the panel. Um, they were uh, listening very well. They were almost at the edge of their seats. My brave fellows, we stand here at the banks of the Delaware. You have passed through many hardships. You have conducted yourself better than Caesar's legions. And then uh, they asked me a historical question. Number eight came out and was it looked like he was, um, had just been through the ringer. The competition is stiff. The, the other gentlemen are very good, too. Every time you go through it, you learn a little something about yourself and how it's run. And, you know, maybe if they hold it the same way, I'll have a little more insight about what to expect. I, th it was, I was very comfortable in this format. Mm -hmm. And uh, I liked the questions. I didn't like being 10th, but uh, that, that's the luck of the draw. You, you, you pulled out your own number. I know, I know. I pulled out my number. On that. I, I mean, you're clearly in the top three. I'm not sure who the other two are. Bob might be one of them. That kid Davis did very well. If I, if I get it, it will mean everything to me. It will be the icing on the cake. It'll be winning the lottery. It'll be winning an Emmy. It'll be, it'll make my heart glow with pride. And I, I will be exuberant for the rest of my life. Weeks pass. It's now October. The murmurs here and there, the complaints of the auditions being fixed have died down, as everyone anxiously awaits news of who will be the next George Washington. 
It's less than 12 weeks to the crossing. The vibes that I got, I thought everybody was like this because when I was on that top of that stage and they were looking at me like, like Moses on top of Mount Sinai, yeah, 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 yeah. I felt very confident, but you never know. Sam is glued to his phone. Still nothing, huh? Nothing. Hoping for a call, an email, anything. I don't know. Tonight could be the night. Whatever, you know, tomorrow. Why are they waiting so darn long? John and Pat have retreated to the world outside of Washington Crossing Park and found solace with their first love, the siege weekend. Ram down. Cartridge. For them, it's been proven. Reenacting, keeping busy with the hobby can help relieve anxiety. I'm not on pins and needles. Uh, I'm just going to let it be and let, let the chips fall. Um, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I'm going to try again in three years. I'm going to keep trying until I get it. I, I'm getting text messages, I'm getting phone calls. I walk into Starbucks and they're asking me if, if they made a decision yet. So it, it, it's, I keep waiting and waiting and waiting also. Their days are spent in battles, surrounded by the dry pop of guns ah! and the boom of cannons. And their nights, their nights are filled with jollification. King Louis was the king of France before the revolution. No way, all the way, all the way, Joe. But then he got his head cut off, which was his constitution. No way, all the way, all the way, Joe. All the way, all the way, Joe. Thank you. So now you're questioning not only what you were taught for years, and you're going to be questioning religion, but you're questioning authority. For Ron, who teaches a Western Civilization course at Warren County Community College, it's business as usual. The contest, the park, and John's role as president of the Friends of Washington Crossing Park are still heavy on his mind. So why do you feel so certain it's not going to be you? <laughs> Uh, it's just the way things are, and just uh, my gut instinct, that's all. With the financial crisis of the last few years, and then obviously this organization stepping in and basically funding the whole thing. I mean, they own the whole thing, and he just happened to be in the position at the time. It could have been me if I was chosen or somebody else. Whoever, you would have been the face of Washington to this organization, and now you're, the, you're chosen as the president of the organization, and now, um, which is fine, but... The organization shouldn't have anything to do with picking the new one. That's the problem. I would really hate to say that, yeah, John had it fixed for himself and, and you know, I wasted my time to do this. I, I don't want to think that. Um, my heart tells me that hopefully these people who, who, have, who, who were there in front of us, listened to us, understood what, what we were going after, and um, hopefully that they, they, make, they make a choice and they make the right decision. It's been 44 days since the 10 men auditioned. Today, the winner of the contest will be introduced to the public for the first time. On behalf of Washington Crossing Historic Park, Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission, and the Friends of Washington Crossing Park, I am welcoming you this morning. After a um, ruling audition and search, we're pleased to announce John Bazima here in the center with the Honor Guard who will be serving as our primary Washington for the next three years. This time, we're also choosing an understudy that will be available to substitute when our main general is not available. So let's welcome John Badziba as General Washington for the next three years.
study, we're very happy to announce is Sam Davis. Okay, so we'll have you make one cut and okay. Sam can make another cut. You ready? Yep. Sir? Thank you. Cole has said, I want to congratulate you that you won the position of George Washington's substitute, or what was it called, um, alternate. But you won the position of George Washington, alt and, and I was like, and then boom. Get a little closer, guys. I was surprised that he did it again. I really was. If you put Vegas bets on it, when he ran for it, yeah, there, were, there was a good shot that he would get it again. So my thought process, the only person I had to beat in that room was John. Everybody else there, I didn't worry about. The only person I had to worry about was the guy who already had it for three years. You know what, this is all fine and dandy, but to have somebody do it for six years straight with the possibility of restarting again, maybe we should put out ahead of time some rules and regulations. The last Washington, how long was he? Uh... Me. That was me. Three years. Three years? And I just okay. got, re got re-upped for another three years. Oh, okay. All right, big smile right What's here. What's the liberty? The liberty. The liberty. People would say to me, Sam, you know there's politics in becoming George Washington. So how could it be? Would George Washington want to live in a way that would be unethical? I don't think so. The backlash continues when a letter is sent to the paper. It was addressed to videographer Nair Abdu. Copies were sent to each of the contestants, the judges, and local businesses. It kind of looks like a ransom note, written in bold, all caps, italics, parts are underlined. We the people are not blind, it says. The press is not blind. We the citizens of the United States can see that this contest was a farce and hidden away from the public view so that Godzilla will win again. This is corruption at its best. It's signed, Publius. The letter that I received said, this isn't over yet. You'll see what's gonna happen. It was just a rambling letter and it was completely off base. They had a lot of bad information. And if they are true to their ideals that were expressed in this letter, then they would have signed it in the first place. Tensions are high, accusations are flying, and John isn't the only one on the defensive. This year's choice has called the judge's decision into question. This community is always going to have problems with who you pick. I, 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 having done it twice, I'm now convinced of that. And somebody is not going to be happy. In 2007, Meg McSweeney was one of the judges who picked Ron Rinaldi to be George Washington. At that time, she received complaints that she and her colleagues had chosen the wrong person. Now, she's getting complaints the whole thing was fixed. You know, there are people who, you know, they spend their whole lives hoping that one day maybe they'll get to do it. And it would be such an honor. And it would be, you know, but you know, it's, it's, it's like the Oscars. Not everybody gets one, you know? <laughs> I can only say as, as a judge who was absolutely involved, I never had the sense that people knew at the beginning of that process who was going to win. And I will say there was argument right up to the end because there really was, there, you know, I think it, it truly was a competition. The only other time that I was a judge was a good 10 years ago, and I think that might have been John's first time uh, trying for uh, the position, and he's 100% different than he was back then. John Gazeba won because he was the strongest candidate, notwithstanding the fact that there were other excellent, excellent candidates. So I'm, I'm not quite sure why there's some sour grapes out there. He was just so much better. You know, everyone was good. He was really so much better, and it would be ridiculous if he hadn't been picked. I have venti skinny vanilla latte, please. Venti skinny vanilla 
It's Christmas morning, and nine men woke up today wishing they were in John's shoes, putting on the uniform of Washington, preparing to be greeted as the general. But instead, they'll suit up for lesser roles. All right, and we are off. For days, conversation among this year's contestants has centered around one thing. Will John cross? Heavy rains have raised the river, and the idea of not crossing has John a bit on edge. Here's, here's the problem. If you start telling people we're not crossing, we don't know if we're not crossing. So if you're telling people we're not crossing on the phone... We're not telling people anything. No, we okay. didn't tell them We're telling anything. people there's been no decision made yet. Okay. They're going to row right up toward the point and get out into the channel and see what it's like. It doesn't matter. I mean, if we hit there rather than over there, I'm satisfied. Yeah, well, we want to get, get near the gangplank. Well, right. well, let me... Let me Go back for a second. Are we crossing? We're okay. Going up the channel. All right. So they want this year, the current is just too strong for the boats to make it to the opposite shore. They'll be pushed too far downriver. After everything, the competition and controversy, Mother Nature has the final say, and John won't get to cross this year. It's disappointing because now you got to wait a whole other year to try this again. But we all have had that disappointment at some point. So what they're going to do is just load the boats and take them up the channel. It also gives everyone an, eye, an you know, opportunity to see the troops in the boats and actually the boats moving. We plan to cross back into New Jersey and attack from three directions, the Hessian outpost of Trenton. Not everyone gets a chance to be Washington. But the men who aspire to the role share one of Washington's most admirable traits. He didn't give up. Jim Gibson, who played Washington, we were crossing the boat and it just was, enjoy the moment. Just enjoy that moment on, on the water and, and, you're, and you're Washington. And I just hope I get to that point. I mean, I've been doing it for so long, I just want to get to that point. The contest wasn't fair. It was not fair, it was fixed. I mean, obviously I can't prove it, but with everything that I know, I know I, I, I don't have any doubt that it was. And, uh, but then again, you know what? People can believe whatever they believe. You know, I never let things slip out of my hand. But this time, it slipped out of my hand. And I will do everything in my power in three years from now to make sure I grasp that title because I want it. <laughs> 